What's up guys? My name is Bilgen Waffles. This is gonna be one of the fastest super smelters in 1.18 plus. This right here is everything you'll need. If you enjoyed the video, please leave a like and maybe consider subscribing. So the first thing you need to do is place this double chest right here. This is gonna be your output chest for everything that comes out of the super smelter. We now need two rows of six hoppers behind the chest. And this part right here will be the direct center of the machine. So use that to plan accordingly. Now we need to come over to the side and place 10 hoppers off of this hopper right next to the chest. You're gonna then do the same exact thing on the row next to it. Skip two more rows and then do the same thing on the end of the hopper line. We're also gonna do the exact same thing again on the other side. For a better view, here's a bird's eye angle of what it should look like. Now that we have those hoppers in place, we're gonna skip one block from the center and then put nine furnaces down on each set of hoppers. If you wanted to only smell ore, uh, you could do blast furnaces or food, you could do smokers. It all works the same. However, furnaces kind of just are an all around method of getting the job done. And again, here is a bird's eye view to show a little bit better of an angle of how the furnaces are laid out. Make sure you leave that gap so those hoppers form out a letter I. Now we're gonna get out our hoppers again and you're gonna place them on the front of every furnace. These hoppers are in place to supply fuel from a minecart system that we're going to be implementing later on. And just like the previous step, we're going to do the same thing except on top of each furnace. The point of these hoppers is to distribute the items that you want smelted into each furnace. Now back at the front of the machine, we're gonna take our slabs out and you're gonna place one here and one here. Now go to the side of the machine and put two slabs on each of these hoppers. And then just connect them all the way down on the end. It'll kind of look like a letter E. And of course, do the same thing on the other side. Now go back to the middle and we're gonna basically fill this whole layer with slabs. You're basically just going too deep from hopper to hopper on each end. And you're gonna do it on both sides. And once you get it done correctly, the end result will look four blocks wide by six blocks deep. Back at the top in the front of it, we're gonna remove these two blocks and then replace them with redstone blocks and then use four building blocks to bring this front out a little bit more. At the very back center of the machine, use four building blocks and then in the center of those two, Go five more building blocks deep. Place two temporary blocks here, and then two more building blocks on top of those, and you can delete the temporary blocks. Then we're gonna need to place three building blocks, skip one, and then two, and then the same on the other side, two and then three. Now it's time for the rails. I strongly recommend that you do them in the same order that I do them, just to avoid confusion. First put a powered rail down and then a detector rail after, and another rail on top of this block, which you can destroy and replace with a real block. This sets your detector rail at an angle that it needs to be at. And then on top of this powered rail, just place a fence gate. And then you can go on the other side and basically just follow the same exact pattern. Now we're back at the front of the machine, you're going to have to place two temporary blocks with two blocks above it, and you can destroy the temporary blocks. We're going to start off up here with two normal rails, and then three powered rails. Again, I recommend doing it in my order, or else it's just going to screw things up completely. Then put two more rails down here on the bottom of this track. Then you're going to want to place a powered rail here, and if you do everything correctly, it should not connect to the bottom track, and should be ready to go. So all you're gonna have to do is place this detector rail right here and just like on the back, you're gonna put another rail down and destroy it and put a block in its place. Now place the fence gate above the powered rail. And you're gonna take exactly what you just built on this side and essentially mirror it to the other side. That was easy enough, we got that figured out. So now we're going to take our tracks and basically snake them through this top layer. And it's gonna snake around and come back to the front. So take your powered rails and bring them all the way down to the end. 
take your normal rails and make the curve back to your powered rails all the way back down. And essentially you're just gonna follow this pattern, take your normal rails, make the curve, and powered rails all the way back down. Don't worry right now about powering these rails, we'll get to that in a later step. Normal rails for the curve, powered rails all the way back down. Once you get to this final block, you're gonna put a powered rail down, a normal rail down for the turn, and then powered rails all the way till the end. It won't connect up, but that's fine because it's just one way, so it works perfectly fine. So now on our fuel track, we're gonna take powered rails and go all the way down to the end. And then on the curve, guess what? We're gonna put a normal rail and then bring that all the way around these slabs and then powered rails. And then at this corner, we're gonna put these normal rails. They will connect up, but if you just keep going, it should be fine. It shouldn't mess with anything. Power rails all the way down, normal rails at the curve. Sorry, I'm not trying to be annoying. And once you get to the end of these hoppers, you're gonna want to go down one, take a normal rail and make the curve and then powered rails all the way down and it should connect right up to that detector rail we set up earlier. Now just take everything we just did, mirror it, flip it, put it on the other side and this will be both sides of the minecart system done. So at the back of the machine, we're gonna place redstone blocks next to these downwards rails. This is gonna power everything. And then on the second to last powered rail of each side, we're gonna put redstone blocks. If everything is done correctly, this should power all the rails on the track and we shouldn't have any more issues with that. The rail system is complete. Now it's time to start doing the redstone. So on the top of the machine, you're gonna to wanna to put three slabs next to these detector rails on both sides. And then one temporary block, one building block above it, another temporary block, and then one more building block above it and do that on the other side as well. And you're gonna to wanna to put a sticky piston on the inside of these blocks facing the fence gates, and then a redstone block in between the piston and the fence gate, and you can delete your temporary blocks. On those slabs that we just placed, place a comparator with the two ticks facing towards the detector rail, a piece of redstone dust, and then a repeater set to the third tick. Uh, you would basically just click this twice to move it and then two more pieces of redstone dust then like the rest of the build we're going to do the same thing on the other side so the comparator the redstone dust the repeater set to the third tick and then two more redstone dusts and that completes the redstone on the front end of the machine nothing really too difficult or complicated going on it's pretty straightforward just pay attention to make sure everything's done correctly and now we're gonna go to the back of the machine where we load our fuel. So what you're gonna wanna do is come down here and place a comparator, comparator, piece of redstone dust, and then down a block and then place another comparator. And then the same on the other side. And next to this detector rail, we're gonna put one more comparator down. And then on the outside, we're gonna put a redstone torch with a block above it place a temporary block next to that block and then a building block on top and inside of that temporary block. And you're gonna to wanna to do the same thing on the other side. So a redstone torch, building block above it, temporary block next to that, and then put a building block above that and inside. And you can delete your temporary blocks. Now go on to the little mountain we just made. Put a redstone block here and a repeater right here facing the fence gates. And then a redstone block kind of diagonally below the repeater. And then same thing on the other side, you know how it goes. On top of the comparator next to the detector rail, place an observer on both sides. And then above that observer, place a sticky piston facing towards your machine. You're gonna wanna place two dirt blocks next to the sticky piston and then a building block and a slime block above that. Then you can delete your two temporary blocks. Then just do the same thing over here. 
two temporary blocks, a building block, and a slime block. This part of the redstone is a bit confusing, so if you do need any help, just go back, make sure you did everything correctly, make sure your comparators and your repeaters are facing the right way, make sure you have that redstone torch in the right spot, all your redstone dust and your blocks in the right spot, and make sure your pistons are facing towards your machine, there should be a gap where the fence gate goes. Just go back and double check everything. Now we can place our hopper minecarts down on top of these detector rails and then place down two temporary blocks above these fence gates and then two hoppers pointing into those temporary blocks and then you can delete those. Back at the front of the machine, place two hopper minecarts on top of those detector rails, place some more temporary blocks above and then two chests above the hopper minecarts. This is going to be your input system. Anything you want to smelt goes in this chest. This is probably the most confusing part, so please pay attention. At the back of the machine, we're gonna go to this first hopper, and we're gonna fill the last four slots with items that are non-fillable into the furnace slot. In my professional opinion, I think rails work the best here. And then you're gonna go into the furnace that that hopper leads into, and place a whole stack of your fuel type into it. And now you're gonna to wanna to go back into that hopper and place a full stack into that slot you left empty. This should turn on the redstone coming out of that hopper. And you're gonna to wanna to do the same over here. So you're gonna open up the hopper, four sets of rails on the last slots. Open up the furnace that that leads into, place in a stack of your fuel source, and then go back into the hopper and place a stack of your fuel source in that empty slot. And now it's time to lock these minecarts in place. So what you're gonna do is completely fill these with your fuel type. It's gonna lock the pistons next to it and essentially now your minecarts are ready to start fueling your machine. Later I do put a double chest above those hoppers. And now you're gonna go over to the hoppers that you filled with the rails and take out one of your fuel sources. So in my case, just one block of coal. And this will send the minecart down and fill the whole line of hoppers with your fuel. It does take a lot of time, but if you want to, you can go through and add the rails and your fuel source to every hopper down the line. It will save you resources in the long run, but however, it does take a lot of extra time. What I'm doing here is completely optional, but it will help us load our items into our output chest a little faster. So you're going to delete the chest and then dig down one block deep. Now you can place your chest one block deeper from where you had it before and then you're going to want to dig out the side just so you can get underneath and then place two hoppers going into the chest. Fill back up the blocks you dug out and then two more hoppers on top of the chest. And like I mentioned earlier, we're going to go to the back here and just place a double chest on top of these hoppers for our fuel source. Um, and then you can just dump it with all your fuel and it should start pulling immediately and filling the hoppers below. Back at the front here, you can see we still don't have anything smelting yet. So what we're going to do is go into our input chest and fill it up with items that we want to smelt. Immediately after putting something in there, the hoppers are going to start distributing it to the furnaces and your system should be in place and ready to start working. So that is it. That is the super smelter for 1.18 plus. It's not really that complicated of a build, but it is quite tedious. Now, if we open our output chest, we can start seeing items are starting to flow through. If you broke anything throughout the process, you may have items stuck in hoppers. It'll take a few minutes for them to get through the system, but once they're through, they won't come out again. And as you can see, we are getting items insanely fast. We've only had items in there for maybe a minute and a half and we're already at two full stacks of iron and it's starting to really flow through now. Obviously it would be quite a bit harder of a build to accomplish in survival mode, but it is definitely possible. Again, make sure if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. Please subscribe to the channel if you love the content. I'm going to try to make tutorials for everything you can possibly do in Minecraft, so please don't miss out if you need help. 
and hopefully we'll be able to teach you something new. This is a brand new channel that I'm working on. We're still trying to get picked up by the algorithm, so every little bit helps. Please share, please do whatever you can. Only if you like the content. If you don't, let me know in the comments below. One more thing, like I said earlier in the video, if you want to use this for other things, you can swap out the furnaces for like blast furnaces or smokers. Um, you could also do half and half if you really wanted to. Just make sure that you split the input chest in half so that way one minecart is getting food, one minecart is getting ore or whatever you want to do with it. Just make sure your input chests are separated so the minecarts distribute the correct items to the correct machines. And as you can see, we've only been AFK for a few minutes and it is really pumping out some iron. Uh, right here, we're obviously fast forwarded quite a bit, but it is just, it's flowing through. All our coal blocks have made it through the system. Um, in just a few minutes, we were able to almost fill up this entire chest. It really comes down to you just having enough resources to keep up with the machine. And again, thank you guys. Hope you enjoy it.